Hello and welcome to week B, week B of the Struthless Alphabet Superset Challenge. The Alphabet Superset was started by Struthless. Every week, our medium, our style and our theme will stay the same. However, our topic will be based on the letter of that week. I'm also going to be putting all of the Alphabet Superset Challenge videos, God, that's a mouthful, I'm going to be linking all of those in the description below. So if you do happen to miss a week, you can always find the linked videos in the description. So with all that being said, let's get into it. I'm starting off the video this week with the banana. And for this week's video, I've decided to do the painting process a little bit different to last week's. Instead of base coating all of the items first and then coming back in with the details, I thought I would paint each of the items in one go, from start to finish. My thoughts for painting this way was that it would make the video make more sense to you guys as the viewers. So I'm not jumping back and forth from item to item. This way you get to see each one from start to finish and how the process is done. As it turned out, this process actually worked out far better for me in the long run anyway. When I was base coating the banana, I thought instead of doing one flat yellow colour, I would add in a few variations of yellow. So a little bit of dark, a little bit of light, a little bit of green and some blemishes, just like you would get in a real banana. Painting in this way kind of made me lose myself in the painting. And before you know it, the whole banana was done. I guess that's because in my mind, even at this stage, I was still painting the base coat. And because of this, I wasn't striving for perfection. I mean, it's just the base coat, right? No need to worry about anything at this stage. I wasn't overthinking every brush stroke or every mark. I was just laying down the colors and really not overthinking anything. I couldn't believe just how easy the whole banana was coming together. No problems, no issues and no fix ups. I guess it just goes to show what a positive mind can do and how much of a difference your mood can really make to your artworks. All of this painting bananas has got me feeling hungry. Oh, banana. Now that I have had my yummy breakfast, it's time to get back into the painting. And I'm going to be working on the Band-Aid. I've decided to do the Band-Aid in that stereotypical pinky fleshy toned color. I could have gone with some bright colored Band-Aid or cute Band-Aid design, but I thought I would keep it fairly traditional there's going to be a lot of bright colors later on. And just when I thought I was gonna get this done on time. Hello. <laughs> Off you go. Make it very fun. Okay. Hey. 
watch out for the paint. Okay, destruction's over and time to really get stuck back into this painting. I'm going to base coat the badger in a fairly flat colored layer first. There will be multiple layers and although this layer probably won't be seen in the end, I want to make sure that there's no blank canvas showing through between any of the gaps that might be visible in the future layers. I've been using a cheap black paint. Um, I try to use up the paints that I've got or the craft supplies that I've got instead of using my good stuff. And I thought being a base coat, I am being black, I'll just use the cheap paint, to save my good paint for, you know, the top coat. But you can't go past good quality paints. So I'm gonna go back to my golden. My dog has just come and bumped the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try again. I'm going to go back to the golden because it just works. It covers really good and I do like to use up my old art supplies. Um, but yeah, I, even with black, it's just watery. I've done two coats and it's still not covering. So next coat, I'm going back to my golden paint. You can see here how very little paint I need. There's only about four or five drops in this little bowl. And just look at that coverage. It's so much better. And after a full coat over the entire badger's black fur, wow. look how much I still have left. I'm not being sponsored by Golden, but I think it's important to appreciate a good quality paint. Although it might cost a little more than the cheaper brands, this is very pigmented. And I actually think it works out about the same in the long run because a little bit goes a long way. And for people like me that have a very bad habit of putting far too much paint on their palettes, the little droplets make it much easier not to waste paint. For the second layer of fur, I'm adding in variations of color, making sure I go darker than what I actually need. And this way, when we do the final layers, we can go lighter and have that dark peeking through, giving it more texture and more depth. For this third layer, it's lots and lots and lots of tiny little hairs, all individually painted with a very tiny brush. I am varying the colors and the opacity of this layer to give it a little bit more dimension. And now for the final layer of the fur. Once again, lots of tiny little brush strokes, but this time lightening the fur a little bit more and really concentrating on where the lights and the darks will fall. All of this adds texture and depth to the fur and gives it a more realistic appearance. Just like the banana and the band-aid, I'm really happy with how this little badger is turning out. It's so weird for me to be at this stage of the painting and be completely happy with everything I've done so far. Normally I kind of hate my paintings until the last minute, especially when it hits that ugly stage. But so far I haven't really felt like that at all during this painting. For the backpack, I went with a bright red because red is actually one of my favorite colors. I've added a little bit of burgundy into the red mix for the first layer of shadows. I then added a little bit of black into that burgundy red mix for the deepest and the darkest shadows on the bag. Now it's time for the beret. When I first thought about doing a beret on the badger, I envisioned a fawny colored wool woven beret. So I guess it's back to that tiny little paintbrush 
and lots of little strokes once again. But it's this little detail that really helped sell the idea of the wool. Back to some relatively normal sized paintbrushes now for the books. I paint the edges of the books first, where the pages are. And then base coat the covers of the books in some leather tones. Just like that, the second coat is done. To give the books the leather effect, I'm dry brushing some lighter colours over the top and then adding in some dark shadows where the books would naturally crease. A few gold trims and we have some old school books. Okay, now for the butterfly wings. As much as I have loved the painting process so far and everything has been going smoothly and I was actually happy with everything, along come the butterfly wings. I should have known I couldn't get through a whole painting without having one thing that I was not 100% happy with. They're not terrible and I don't hate them. It's just not what I originally imagined. They are bright, which is good, but I guess what I was seeing in my mind is not quite what was coming out in the painting. I mean, I don't hate the butterfly wings. It's just not what I was originally going for, I guess. Maybe it's the perfectionist in me, or maybe it's just that I can't seem to go through an entire painting without not liking something. <laughs> we are our own worst critics after all. I did think about painting over the butterfly wings and starting it again, or fiddling with it until I was more happy with it, but I decided against it. I think sometimes it's best to continue on with the painting and not overthink things too much. I reminded myself of how I felt when I was painting the banana. Being able to let go and trust the process, it done me the world of good. And in the end, when I look back at the painting as a whole, I like it. So I'm really glad that I did just let it go and continue on. I think if I had tried to fix it, it probably would have made things worse and I would have ended up stressed and not enjoying the painting as much as I did. I think it's been a good lesson for me to just let go, enjoy myself and not worry about everything being perfect because in the end, the painting as a whole has turned out really good and I'm so happy with it. And that is it for week B. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did and you want to see what the next 24 letters are going to be looking like, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and don't forget the notification bell. That way you won't miss any of the letters coming up. With that being said, I will see you in the next one for week C. Bye.